So, uh, thank you everyone for your time and attention today. Thank you, Aaron, for saying that you want people to talk about their businesses, not just in like total PR mode, but actually what's going on, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, that whole thing. Because my museum, we now in over six months, has definitely gotten to a place where I see opportunities, but I also see uh, risks. But I also am dressed as Clark Kent, who I celebrate in the museum, uh, for a, a, a reason. And that is that today is a very special day. So if you would click. Mistakes, which is okay because you learn from your mistakes, 
I've got uh, Craig Breedlove who tried to go fast at the speed of sound on land, and his first uh, car wasn't fast enough. He learned from that. He built another one. That wasn't fast enough. He learned from that. He built another one. And of course, you know, Thomas Edison famously it took him like about a thousand times to get the light bulb to actually work. So this is again part of the spirit of America is that we don't stop even if things don't happen right away. And um, the last thing I learn and celebrate in the museum is that kindness and respect are superhero qualities we can all have. You know, being a superhero isn't just flying and having bullets bounce off your chest. It really can be how you treat other people. And I was wondering if somebody from the school was going to be here because if they were, I was going to give them a gift. Next, please. This is a poster from the 1950s in which yeah, there we go. Superman was used to help kids in school know that the American way is to treat each other with respect. The poster says, if you hear anybody talk against a schoolmate or anyone else because of his religion, race, or natural, national origin, don't wait. Tell them that kind of talk is un-American. So again, Superman wants other people to know that they can be super too. And it doesn't require that they know how to fly, to be able to fly. So nobody from the school system here? We've got Janet with homeschool. Mm -hmm. Janet's with the homeschool co-op. We can run a homeschool co-op. We're not with the public school co-op. OK, so this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the Thank you. Oh, Thank you, so really love it. OK, next. So today's talk, um, come grow with us, uh, Stroud's marketing team, and uh, Deep Fork Productions. What, what an awesome video I watched just the other day. It's been about a year since you produced it, it's like 14 minutes or so. Does it say we are a great town? It turns us. I hope you've watched it or you do soon, it's on YouTube. Because uh, it, it not only it talks to me about growing, like, you know, financial security, and, 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 uh, and well, it's about personal growth. It's a place where there's something in the air, and that basically is the love and acceptance that I, uh, a Superman champion. Um, and that's what I have gone, uh, gone through since moving here two and a half years ago. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, and not a whole lot more. I'm going to talk about what I know my museum now needs, now it's been open for six months. <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about my financial challenge. And so again, this personal growth thing. You know, I mentioned my father being a bit of a monster. And so with that kind of a start in life, I've had to recover. I've had to put myself back together as an adult since I didn't have an, uh, an easy time uh, as a child to, to build a, a foundation. Sure. And accept it, even though you're different. I am not the standard person, you know, no wife and kids, um, didn't speak until I was five, so my verbal skills weren't well developed, I'm autistic, which I've learned only in the last ten years, so my brain is a little more off, differently wired. But being accepted for being who I am is just this incredible gift. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the first time I walked into my church, uh, the first time I talked to Gary and Monica at True Value Hardware, it's like, you know, we like you, you're okay. And frankly, <laughs> I wasn't so clear about liking myself uh, at the same time, because not having had a life that looked like most people's lives looked, I didn't know whether that was a good thing. And I've learned since I've been here and figured out how to put this museum together that my unique uh, um, story uh, actually can contribute, even if I'm not going to have a legacy of kids, I'm not going to have a legacy of, um, well, the kid part is uh, my most. But the thing that I know is that Americans need to have this experience like I've had. I think it's a huge benefit for people to feel accepted, and I think that there's one of the, one of the problems that we face is a lack of acceptance for people who are different. You know, and if you have a lifestyle or if you have a religious choice, or if you have whatever you have. Um, uh, there's too much of, oh, you're not okay because you're different. 
here I've experienced that you are okay, even if you're different. And it's just fantastic. So that's, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but the next slide, I had totally unexpected, thanks to YouTube computer algorithm, even though I loved trains since I was a kid, I only discovered about four months ago this thing called the American Freedom Train from our 1976 by Centennial. And if you click on that, you'll see not just the actual train, but this is an HO scale replica of the train. And I now own that same train in HO scale. I don't have a layout. And frankly, I can't put a big layout together for the train to run. But what I can do is I can set up a diorama in the Warhol Museum that celebrates the train without it moving. Easier, less expensive, takes up less space. And that is what I'm going to do in the next few months. I've already been buying little buildings because of the, of the train. You've got to have a town that it goes through. And the fun thing about that is that I will be celebrating small town American guys again. That spirit of acceptance and, uh, and the tolerance that uh, Stroud has. And I'm not saying it's only in Stroud, but I suspect it's a, it's a thing that doesn't get talked about enough. And uh, we're, we're here, and, I, and um, I believe we'll talk about it. In fact, that's part of the pitch I'm going to be making here. So I knew that I wanted to now celebrate that train that I was learning about recently. And then I realized I wanted to celebrate small town America at the same time. So that would be part of the diorama. But I've had this storytelling project that, you know, a wonderful woman, Paula Ackerman, made a painting for the museum. And it's all about how your stories count. I want to finally do what I thought I would do uh, with that painting, we did interview folks, interview you all on camera, and make those interviews part of the museum's official uh, uh, website uh, storytelling archive, where the subject of the interview will be how things work in your lives and in the lives of, your of, the, of our town, and just, because we've got something to offer you, basically, that's what I'm getting at. So I want to do that, like, starting soon. I invite you to sign up to come in and be in. And then next, please. This is something I also didn't know was possible, even though I knew the character existed. Sarge and Fillmore from the movie Cars. Now, Stroud has a connection to Cars, mm -hmm. Dawn's restaurant, and, but did I think that I could do anything more than have a little replica, which I actually do if you come to the museum? Next slide. Sarge is here. Yeah. Who knew Sarge was here? Well, he wasn't only here when uh, Jenny and Del uh, brought their pawn shop to Main Street. And I, when the, I first saw Sarge parked outside the pawn shop, I was like, oh my God. We need Fillmore. Next one, please. Because Fillmore and Sarge, in the car's world, they are political opposites. They are lifestyle opposites, and they are best friends. And it's like this amazing thing that Disney, you know, tucked into all the other parts of that story in that first movie, which is going to be 20 years old in 2026. Sarge and Fillmore. What if we had Fillmore? Well, we can. There are Volkswagen buses out there. You just got to buy one, have the money, paint it up. And um, how much that will cost? I don't know. I, I feel it's it's it's. it's no, it's, it's, it's gotta happen. <laughs> and Dell is on board, by the way. Dell is wearing. Talk about unexpected things. I go on Etsy every now and then. Somebody on Etsy produced T-shirts, and the T-shirt looks like either Sarge or Fillmore. Dell, if you stand up, since oh Dell owns Sarge, <laughs> oh there's the Sarge. And I have the Fillmore T-shirt at home, but it doesn't work with Clark. <laughs> but there will be a day when Dell and I will be walking around town as Sarge and Phil Dark. Maybe we'll move for Halloween or something. But this is something that, uh, again, not only are they friends 
despite their lifestyle and political differences. They represent you know, the military and the counterculture. And that yeah, it is lifestyle stuffy. But the healing of the American spirit, which is the, in essence the museum's mission, is to help heal the American spirit. You know, no magic wand can't do the whole country in the overnight. You know, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a project, a process. I'm working to make uh, headway on the, the military folk and the, uh, the counterculture folk. They could be friends for real with this example of power. <coughs> Story for another time. Um, the next slide, frankly, is where I have to be honest about the cost of doing all this. I moved here not because I had a business plan, not because I run the numbers and I knew that I could make a museum work on my retirement uh, 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 savings, um, and it turns out I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but, it, but because it was a spiritual quest, essentially, to finally figure out it, and in my late 60s how to make a difference, and leave a legacy, I, uh, I, I did it just praying that it would all pan out. And, you know, it's not like I'm broke. But, um, as I say at the bottom here, by the 4th of July, I need to see that I have financial viability, which is roughly 30 to 35,000 a year in England. But I own the building, but I've got utility costs, and I've got uh, you know, taxes, and I've got things that I need to do to refresh the place. You know, those, it's not cheap to build a, uh, a diorama, you know, Run anywhere. There, there are costs, but there, you know, is there going to be enough income from tourists, which are only basically here in May through September? Is there going to be a potential to do educational programs that I could charge, maybe with the help of the school? Because I'm, this is also the weakness. Was I, I didn't move here with a team. I moved here, and then I got a cat. Uh -oh. <laughs> I didn't even have the cat until I got here. And the cat is great, but Inky doesn't really have you know, any way to, you know, run the cash rich. He does say hi to everybody, but it's very funny. Um, and could there be a newspaper? The chain, uh, the, the Wise Club, uh, Jennifer, the City Hall, is, uh, is always saying we, we would be a newspaper, and I know she's not the only one. But if there was a newspaper, uh, you know, again, I'm a reporter. I, I love journalism. And the kind of newspaper I think we need is, again, one that celebrates what we know works and the spirit of followers uh, and acceptance. And not forget, you know, we've got 26 churches in the town of 26 other people. So what is that part two? Um, but I'm, 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 I don't have this solved. I, I need to figure this out. And uh, um, so next is, the old expression is, whenever there's an emergency, sometimes there's an opportunity. And um, spiritually, again, because that's how I got here, you know, I knew that 2026 is the centennial of Route 66. I knew it's also when America turns 250. What I didn't realize was it's also 75 years since George was first Superman in that hour-long movie in 1951. It's also 75 years since this book, Conquest of Space, was published. If you come to the museum, it's one of my prized possessions. Before we had NASA, before we could go to the moon, the rocket scientists had to teach the public what they knew how to do. And they published this amazing book, The Conquest of Space, which showed the public what the scientists had figured out. It had paintings in it that were photorealistic, so it helped people have the dream of going out into space. And um, the, the, the thing about it, the educational element of the museum, is I want it to be like that book. I want the museum to help people learn what and what has been figured out that's not well known. The public has, has, has only glimpsed some of the things that some really smart people have come up with over the years. You know, it's like the best kept secret in America, for example, a, a management guru named uh, W. Edwards Deming, who helped us win World War II because he knew how to build a lot of stuff with high quality really fast, and that's how we got all the you know, planes and missiles and everything else that we needed. But anyway, Dr. Deming is like a, a, a legend from the World War II era. He even went to Japan after World War II to help them rebuild at the request of General Douglas MacArthur. This is a story I tell in the museum. 
So we have these uh, anniversaries to leverage, 20 years since the Cars movie came out. It's almost been 20, 26. And then in a weird spiritual twist, the devil will get a kick out of If you watch the documentary on the American Freedom Train that was made when the train was done in 1976, the, the guy who's the front man for the documentary is the actor Robert Lansing. He was best known for the TV show 12 O'Clock High, but if you're a Star Trek guy, he was in one episode playing a character called Gary Seven, whose job was to help humanity not have World War III, not blow ourselves up. Very interesting time travel episode. So when I saw this documentary on the train, and I said, oh my god, there's Robert Lansing. I was like, okay, Gary Seven, American Freedom Train, weird, you know, yeah. I grab onto these spiritual things sometimes because I need all the, uh, all the uh, uh, positive stuff I can. Uh, next is that here's where I get a little more realistic. We've got a marketing analysis situation. I, I've run just kind of like nappies, not full blown, you know, high professional, although I think I can do some. So we've got a great school system in Stroud. We've got sports. We've got outdoor activities. We've got high school musical, which I didn't even know when I moved here, that I was going to get to see Broadway shows, basically, done by high school students. It's awesome. We've got an airport. <laughs> it's incredible. You want to fly here instead of drive? You can do it. And next is that there's one thing we don't have. My tourists know the Rock Cafe. Stroud doesn't have this. So really, classic, fun and playful Route 66 attraction. You know, there's the Blue Whale, there's Pops, there's the Route 66 historic village in Tulsa, which talk about trains. Boy, do they have an amazing train. And uh, a caboose, and I've got to, I've got to go there. Um, we, and then, just like two days ago, I don't remember who was telling me about this. Stroud almost had a full-blown amusement park. Don't mention that because they let us down. <laughs> we were waiting on the set. What were we here? We were waiting. Still, still have the certificates to get in. See? <laughs> so, so you know about the seven continents. I knew we were waiting on them. You know we're going to build it like the next so summer. Let me, let me just mention oh. that I found a Tulsa World News story from 1990 where they interviewed the folks uh -huh. who tried to do this in the 70s. And there's probably other details, but the economy was in the toilet in the late 70s. You know, interest rates were 24%. You couldn't finance a brand new amusement park with those kind of interest rates. So it's the financing that caused the project to crash. But just the fact that people were thinking of Stroud, you know, halfway between Tulsa and Oklahoma City as a place that could support that kind of attraction makes new things that, next please. We could do it again today, but in our own way. We leverage the Rock Cafe, because that's a connection to cars. We leverage the fact that we've got Sarge and we're going to have Fillmore. And we build a new Route 66 museum that realizes the heal the American spirit vision that my little prototype museum uh, does. And, and we start with Sarge and Fillmore's homes. I get out in the museum again in model scale. Fillmore lived in a geodesic dome. Sarge lived in a World War II Quonset hut. They were right next to each other. They weren't like on opposite sides of the town either. And you know, Sarge would raise the flag in the morning, and Fillmore would be putting on Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine we go from that to this. This is Sarge and Fillmore welcoming people to brand new Route 66, Spirit of America Museum. And I took this photograph walking down the street opposite Dental Designs. There's an abandoned motel, although it looks like somebody's living on the right-hand corner. <laughs> that person here? <laughs> well, I'm not saying this is the place where it should be done, but I saw the space and the location uh, and the closest to the Rock Cafe. And I said, well, let me take a picture and send it to my friend Brad. Brad Shea is in the uh, Clark Kent uh, Superman fan community on Facebook. He lives in Staten Island. We used to get together. And um, so you've got Sergeant Fillmore up front, and then you've got a new museum building. 
in the back. And the next slide shows you why I chose that dome kind of museum building design. Domes are a bold structure. And if you use the most advanced technology, which they're now using in Las Vegas, oh my god, the, the Las Vegas sphere, it can create images, photorealistic images on the outside of everything. From the moon to Earth to I saw the other day. They somehow had the rockets dancing around the outside of the sphere for Christmas. Wow. You know, you imagine the rockets, you know, 100 foot high uh, dancing. It's, it's, I don't know, well, I know it costs a lot to build the sphere, but the sphere is also, you know, like about 400 feet across. You scale this down to, you know, 100 feet or whatever the museum building size would have to be, and you find this technology, and you've got something that can light up the sky with images, with colors. You you know, the image I showed you from my friend uh, Brad. This could fit the Route 66 um, uh, tourism mindset where my humble little storefront can't. I mean, I love my storefront, I love my neon sign, but where's my 25 foot high, you know, uh, 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 who's that? Uh, is it not an astronaut, but it's a cowboy, right? Or, the, or Pops that has a 40 foot high soda bottle. Yeah, that happened on my place next to you know, the Gemini Giants for sale. You can buy that. The Gemini Giant, he's for sale. Yeah, but he's, he'd take away from Sergeant Fillmore. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I'm not saying that I've we have figured it all out. This is all uh, kind of like back in the day for napkins of thinking. Well, maybe a little more than back in the day. Oh, yeah, this is right. But next, please. The museums would have programs, it wouldn't again, just be fun, it's art to film, but programs would be interactive history lessons using the kind of technology that Disney knows. They've got ways of educating people, and I'm talking about Disney because of the film or its art connection. The American Freedom Train had 10 cars that they used to tell the uh, American story. And that could be a starting point for trying to figure out what would the lessons be, what would the galleries look like. Again, this is all preliminary stuff. Civic education, not just history, but civic because uh, somebody once pointed out, you're not born knowing how democracy works. You're born basically into a family where mom and dad tell you what to do because they don't want you to, you know, kill yourself by burning your hand and setting the house on fire or getting, you know, red light, you know, you know what a red light is. So. But democracy is about thinking for ourselves. And that's a skill that doesn't come automatically to a lot of people. I, I kind of had it because I knew I couldn't just model my father. But I had to think for myself if I wasn't going to just become a carbon copy of this monster. But that's, and then business education, where I mentioned this uh, famous guy, W. Edwards Deming. There's a, a, a way his work is still being taught, even though he died in 1994. Uh, and, and we tapped into that. And then, what would happen to my wonderful little storefront? It could actually be Stroud's newspaper. You know, people want a, a newspaper in Stroud? How about a newspaper in Stroud where not only are people putting the newspaper together, but every now and then they sit in Clark Kent's office just to you know, imagine telling the right kind of stories from uh, what he did. And next is that I don't just dream about stuff every now and then. I've done something useful. And when I was working for the government back in the day, I was actually involved with building buildings. Uh, one was a huge Army Reserve Center uh, named after Ernest Taylor Pyle, who was a very famous reporter during World War II. Hello, journalism again. I helped design this building. It's a big military place in the Bayside, Queens. And then in New Jersey, a thing called Picatinny Arsenal, that white square building is also something I helped uh, design. And the management side uh, is also part of what I was involved with. And next is my connection to Disney, which basically is Don Welch, uh, as, a, as a friend, although I wish he was around once we go out to dinner or something. But then, thanks to Facebook, 
He has a guy named Peter Carso, who's about my age, and he worked in the Imagineering department of Disney, designing all of those attractions, especially the one that's in the Liberty Square, where you go inside and they tell you the story of America, and they wind up with a, uh, Abraham Lincoln, who's a, a, a robot, mm -hmm. and they've got other presidents who are robots. If you go on YouTube, you watch this 20-minute show, it's incredible what Disney does to tell the story of America with, again, music and movies, but also every now and then. They've got a life-size, excuse me, a, a robotic Mark Twain, and uh, 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 who's the Oklahoma guy who our airport is named after? Rogers. Will Rogers. They've got Will Rogers, and he's an animatronic, and he's spinning a rope, and then he stops spinning the rope, and then he starts spinning it again. How did they get a robot to do this? I don't know, mm -hmm. Disney. So I met this guy on Facebook, and if we wanted to do this, I could reach out to him, and I'm sure he would be thrilled. And then on a, a journey to uh, uh, the entertainment world in general, there's, well, you gotta get that to the time. There's my love of going to autograph conventions where I have met folks from Star Trek. There's William Shatner and uh, Jonathan Frakes. Uh, and we were actually on a Zoom call together because there were COVID and there were no conventions. So talk about innovation. Companies that do conventions decide to offer a way to connect up with these people on the internet. And then uh, Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot, and I have met a couple of times, and she read an essay I wrote about my mom being my personal superhero at age 10. Um, that's a whole story of the miracles of social media. Uh, her 2017 movie showed me the strength of women. And I suddenly flashed on something really brave my mom did when I was 10, and I wrote an essay about it. She saw it, she shared it with her fan, and like 15,000 people were reading about my mom that would have never heard the story. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I got to thank Gal at a, a comic convention for doing that. And if you come to my museum, you'll see the tribute I paid to her character, to her. I even have a picture of her mom. <laughs> There's ways that people can come here and help us talk about what we what we've got to offer. That's the basic point. You know, entertainers are sometimes available. And then after next is for financing, the Ford Motor Company, uh, Ludabert Ford has helped us out in, in whatever ways they have in the past. I saw their name on a Stroud Summerfest T-shirt from a year or two back. But then the Ford. Motor Company headquarters, thanks to my Mustang side, they've got a guy in charge of their racing department, John Clore. I got to meet him because of the Mustang Club going to Detroit once. And um, John and I had, an, had a, a nice little uh, uh, conversation about the power of Mustangs to help you have better times in your life. Go on that adventure on the road. And then Ford actually hired W. Edwards Deming in 1980, and if any of you are old enough to remember their marketing slogan, Ford Quality is Job One, that was because Deming was teaching them how to make their cars good enough to compete with the Japanese, where he'd been teaching for 30 years, and that's why their cars were so good. So, the next slide is that I've got these associations I now belong to for being here. The Oklahoma 166 Association, I'm now on their board, and their uh, head of uh, uh, everything Reese Martin reminded me that the $6.6 million per year grant program, and which can be used towards new projects, not just for fixing up existing. Um, the Museum Association uh, is having their conference in September, and I could pitch a uh, talk there about what we want to do, again, if we want to do it. Because it's not just about what I want to do. It has to be what we want to do. This. And the American Alliance of Museums is a nationwide organization um, that I belong to. And somehow I've connected with the Rotary Club, sorry, Lions Club, but there's a Rotary <laughs> Club based in Washington, D.C., and they invited me to give a talk about healing the spirit of America, which I'm going to do using Zoom on uh, the 27th of February. Okay, now to Disney. 
might want to do this because they have gone outside of their comfort zone in the past when they normally do the theme parks. They came to Times Square, 42nd Street in 1980 when Times Square was uh, 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 it was, it was porno theaters and prostitution. And somehow Mayor Giuliani, I think Mayor Dinkins had a role in it, convinced oh, Disney yeah. to buy a theater on 42nd Street, clean it up, and start doing their own shows. They kicked off the revitalization of Times Square. Well, how about Disney wanting to be, again, not in the theme park, but on Route 66, with our place as their prototype. But they would then build in other places along Route 66, but since we helped them with the development, we get some financial benefits. So that's my Disney thoughts. Ford is a little more complicated because, you know, again, America has a dark side. We've, it's not new. It was there in the beginning. You know, you know, we didn't treat Native Americans well. We called them savages. We had, we had stuff. And in the 1920s, turns out Henry Ford, I didn't know he was an anti-Semitic. No, I kind of heard it. But I learned that he was seriously anti-Semitic. He bought a newspaper in Detroit so he could publish anti-Semitic stuff. He engaged everybody who bought a car. And he had a book that made its way to Germany. And Adolf Hitler read the book. And he went up with a picture of Henry Ford in his office because he was so in love with Ford's anti-Semitism message. Nutty stuff. Well, you know, karma sometimes needs to be dealt with. How about Ford pitching in to help heal the American spirit to kind of compensate for Henry Ford making things a mess in the back around 1920 to 30. That might be a little tricky to that Ford. They might need to do the smile when I'm saying But this is, again, where my head is at today. And just to wrap things up, I invite you to come to the museum. Because this, to me, is a chance for Stroud to be in touch with its inner superhero as a town. I have this thing where you come to the museum and there's a phone booth, and you can go in, and there's a sign that says Clark Kent was here. Which superhero are you going to be today? I, I would love for you to come, get your picture taken in the phone booth, and think not, of, not just about you being a superhero with how you treat them. You can come down. The whole town being a super town, you know. I know it's Stroud come grow with us, but how about it's not just come grow with us, how about it's also be super. Uh -huh. okay. So that's what I invite you to do. And my final slide is that I request the Chamber endorse this project. I don't know how the Chamber works well enough to know what that <laughs> what you look like. You know, is there somebody who has to vote? Is there somebody who has to write a little, I don't know. <laughs> but, and, and then if you do endorse it, uh, please uh, uh, help me speak to all the other people I need to speak to. And I literally, only a week ago I learned that our school system is self-funded. I thought all that oil and gas money went to the, gov the city government. Bob, I, I thought, but no. It comes to the school, and the school does what it wants to with it, which is how it pays you know, five million or so for that new high school. I, I literally thought it had been channeled through the government. And then, so again, who do I talk to to make this pitch and is it something that we actually all uh, sign on to as a town? I don't know. So thank you for uh, listening. and. Um, um, questions and answers? Questions from you, answers from you. <laughs> so you got great vision. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. We'll keep walking and get film more. All right. We're going to have film more. Have you been actively working with, or like, have you worked with grant, grant before for your museum? No museum grants, no. I, uh, the closest I came to that was when I was studying uh, Dr. Deming's management philosophy. Some of his students wanted to take his ideas beyond business into community development. 
They created a program called the Community Quality Council. And they ran it through a trade association called the American Society for Quality. Long story short, I got IBM in New York City to give me $10,000, which was real money in 1992, and free use of their auditorium and a few other things to see if I could set something like that up in New York, which was a big, tall order. Because New York doesn't just say, okay, let's do something new from, you know, a nobody. You know, if I was Michael Bloomberg, maybe they would have listened. So that's the only time I've really gotten uh, in the door and gotten money from anybody. So no grant experience. Do you have any? Um, know somebody? Well, I worked for the Chamber in California before I moved here, and I, I oh, did. You're the California folks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for you were with the Chamber out there. I did, yeah. And oh, I helped a lot of businesses get a, probably over a half a million dollars in grants. I saw. So I think that you need to find someone that knows. I mean, I can, I can try, yeah. but I think really a, a grant writer or yeah. people that are really into grants to know where to look for them. Well, Reese Marsden runs the Oklahoma Sixty Six Association. <laughs> Remind me about the six point six million dollar fund, and then the Oklahoma Museum Association, which has some museums on Route sixty six as part of its base. I'm going to go to both. Yes. For that's who really needs to hear those. Like, if you can get that PowerPoint together with the right grant funding, like you've yeah. already done most of the work. Mm -hmm. It's it's really just getting the like the paper part done. Okay. So it's, it's definitely possible, like you're starting, you're, you're in the yeah. right direction. And, and, and it's just finding the right joke thing. is, you know, i got to do everything because Inky also doesn't know how to try. <laughs> <laughs> Although it does, we do have dictation now, but yeah, I don't think it's English that way. I'm picking up on it. Any other questions or comments? We get the great visuals, so just so people see that, yeah. Brad Shea. Uh-huh. Credit to Brad Shea, who took my I picture of that being the, and yeah. the, the abandoned motel, took a picture of my Sergeant Fillmore miniature, right. uh, took a picture I found of a dome that you can actually buy that's 90 foot across and, and, and you can do it. They, you know, they sell the lights. They don't sell the fancy Las Vegas technology, but they've got the lights. And I think at 90 foot across, it's like about $30,000. But it's not a real permit. It's more like for temporary expos. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't have anyway. Yeah, he, he Photoshop. Yeah, Photoshop.